I think that I shall never see a tilt brush lovely as a tree. With apologies to Joyce Kilmer. Hey everybody, we are teaching tilt brush. And as you may have guessed, today's tilt brush is about a tree or maybe two. Now we've done tilt brush teaching tilt brushes about area effect forests. We've also done inside of jungles, that kind of thing. So today we're actually going to make a single individual tree and all the details. So rather than trying to save resources to make as many trees as possible, we're just going to focus on creating one. So I've got my pedestal here to have the tree growing out of. Now there are actually a whole bunch of different types of trees. Whether you mean the green, bulgy, leafy tree, a deciduous, or a tall, spiny conifer, like a pine tree, or maybe even palm trees and cactuses all count as trees. Well, I'm going to go generic. I'm going to go for a leafy, bushy tree to start with, and we'll also compare it to a pine tree, just so you can see how basic trees are going to work. Now, I'm using the PC-based open brush which is just like the PC-based ba tilt brush. If you're using the Quest or PlayStation VR, you're not going to have as much memory resources as a full play, uh, uh, personal computer is. So we're going to look at ways not only to make it nice and detailed, but we'll mention places where you can save resources by using either a little less detail or some other brushes to try to get more bang for buck out of your tree. Bang for bark, perhaps? In any case, we're going to start with a trunk. Since I'm going for a nice generic tree, I'm going to go for a nice rich brown. The tool you use, I'm actually going to start with the icing tool. Because you can see the icing tool actually has a nice texture to it already. I'm not going to have to paint bark in addition to the substance itself. Now with the icing tool, it's going to react to my light and shadow, so I can go ahead and paint and then change the lighting to fit whatever mood and setting I want. Now trees tend to be not one uniform size all the way through, unless it's like a Norfolk pine that's all perfectly straight. So I'm going to not use a straight edge, I'm going to let my arm move around a little bit. Starting with a base, I'm going to make it fairly thick. So I'm going to make the world small and go for a fairly large icing brush. And I'm just going to make a little wobbly thing like that. We're going to go for a bonsai or maybe a twisted oak, that type of thing. This is just the base, the thickest part of the tree. Everything else is going to be a little bit skinnier, including if I want to go continuing the trunk up a little bit more. Here's a good place to bring in a branch. Anywhere there's a major change of direction, isn't a bad place for a branch. Now I'm going to go smaller again and have secondary branches or continue the main branch out a little bit. It's okay if branches fork here and there. I'm going to bring some more coming up off the top. Be sure you're going in all directions. We're not on a piece of paper so we don't have to be flat. We can go up and down and in and out. Have a good idea of the overall shape you're going for so I can try to keep these branches within that shape. Now I can also start going over and over the same area. If I go through it again like that, you can see how I'm adding just a little more texture. I'm going to bring this up close and I'm going to start adding some more of these extra lines coming up through my trunk as ways of trying to tie some things together here, maybe a little bit of a branch that comes down like that. I could even start bringing roots out, depending on the type of tree and the position. Maybe it's at the top of a cliff. So I'll bring another strand coming down like this, wrapping it around the trunk a little bit, and then coming out into a root. I'm not going to spend too much time making too many branches, but the more detail you add, yes, it will take more resources, but now it's also going to give it more detail, more texture. That comes out of the trunk a little too much. It helps give your sculpture a little more character, make it a little even smaller and get some more branches in here, forking off the main ones. Now, if I was going to have my viewers get really up close and personal, I could really go to town giving lots of these supporting branches. If this is going to be part of a larger picture, let's 
get a splinter off here as well. If this was going to be a larger picture, then I might actually uh, keep it simple like this so I can replicate several of them without having to take up too much resources. Because really it's not the branches, but the green leafy bushes that are going to give it most of the shape. So a lot of these might get covered up. That's okay because it gives me some guidelines on where I want it to grow. A pine tree is not going to be all twisted and gnarled, tend tendably, unless it's like a bonsai or a juni juniper. A Norfolk pine, for example, is much straighter and taller. The trouble with this is it's just as thick at the top as it is at the bottom, and most trees tend to taper. I could use the spike tool. That gives me a long, natural tapering line. I could use the straight edge for perfectly straight, but a little bit of wobble helps keep it feel natural, realistic. Same with the branches. They want to taper a little bit, so I can go a little bit smaller and start bringing out some branches. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be straight. I don't want to get too twisted. Let's get a little smaller as we go up here. A couple more in here, a few forks. So again, the pine tree, it's going to be a little narrower. Get some more wider branches at the bottom here, coming out in different directions, towards the camera, away from the camera, that type of thing. A few more up at the top, except they want to be really skinny at the top. Okay, there's the trunk and branches of my pine tree. Now you can vary your shades of brown, especially if I'm doing this type of detail texture. I could use just slightly different shades of brown to go in, whoops, that's a little too red. Just to give it a little more detail, a little more texturing, a little more variety within the trunk. I'm not going to bother with that too much for this example, just because I want to keep things moving, just so you can get an idea of what's happening. Now that I've got this in place, if you have a ton of resources, you might be tempted to paint in all of the leaves. In a big tree, that could be kind of crazy. In a big tree, that could use a lot of resources, millions of little brush strokes. The cell vinyl in green does give you a very nice leaf shape, either short and wide or long and thin. Either way, if I'm making a small tree, I could go in and start doing all of the leaves by hand. The trouble with a cell vinyl is it is not affected by your light and, excuse me, not affected by your light and shadow. So if I want to have highlights and shadows, I'm actually going to need to find some brighter greens for the higher parts, the brighter parts, and then some cooler, darker greens for underneath in the shadow areas. Now, even though it's drawn and not done by the lighting, we have a lot more feeling of the light and shadow. Now we'll grab, we'll use our dropper tool to get the same shade of green for the middle tree branches. And just use sparingly the bright green, just so we have a direction for those sunlight, direction for the highlight. Now I'm trying to mimic the same top down type of light and shadow. But if I do change the lighting direction, you'll notice it'll change for the tree trunk, but not the leaves. Cell vinyl is great for appearance of detail, but you'll want to get your lighting in first so you can make sure your colors match the colors of the other pieces. Thank you. So we could do it using cell vinyl. I keep walking to my tree here. We could do it with cell vinyl, but I'm going to pull those out. Lost a couple branches, but I'm not going to sweat about it too much. And instead, I'm going to do clusters. Now, one way to do clusters, again, if you have a high resource system, the coarse bristles tool gives you several per spot. It is also affected by light and shadow. So I'm going to find a nice rich green and then go to town giving it direction, giving it shape. You'll notice the ones underneath and behind do indeed get shadows cast upon them. So I could really start going and getting a whole bunch of leaves going to cover the tree. 
This is nice because you can still sort of see through them to see the trunk. As before, even though this is affected by light and shadow, if I actually go in with other colors of green to fill in, you can emphasize where you want light and shadow. So now you can see how it's much darker underneath and bright on top, simply because I'm painting with those colors. Moving the light will affect it, but since I'm using color for it, my color will still be inside to reinforce it. So if I start playing, whoops, wrong one, if I start playing with our lights again, you can see how it is affected, but the colors I chose help keeping its structure. So even with a light behind it, there's still that up and down, light and dark, inside, outside type of feeling. Thank you again. So I overdid those a little bit. Let's get rid of some of these guys. Trying not to lose too much of my tree. So the coarse bristles brush is one of those natural pattern type of brushes, giving you clusters of leaves without having to draw every single leaf manually, like we did with a cell vinyl. Similar to the natural bristles, we have that coarse, uh, the splatter brush. We actually did a lesson about using natural uh, coarse bristles and splatter for natural effects. So I'm going to use that here. Again, I'm going to use a bright green, bright green for a few places where the sun is brightest, deeper greener greens. I'm not doing this as one big stroke. You could and move your wrist around to get some shape. Or you could do lots of little. Again, don't keep your hand in one plane, because then when you rotate, you're just going to have flat. So make sure you get some tree clusters in on all the different angles, different sizes. Now we're going to go for a darker, cooler green to get some shadow areas underneath. So you can see how the splatter brush, if you actually took time and paid attention, you could get a lot of detail without having to paint individual brushes. Let's get a vibrant green. Fill in a little more. So I'm just doing this very quickly and hastily so we get some shape to it, so we get some uh, size to it. But obviously if you spend a good 20 minutes, half an hour on this one tree, you could really get the exact shape you're going for. So that's not bad. If you're on a quest and you re or PSVR and you really want to save space, save resources, you can actually use the hull brush tool to do those shapes as well. And again, the light and shadow will be part of it. I tend to use the matte brush because the shiny hull, the angles and polygons show up a little too much. It doesn't feel like a tree so much as one sharp object. You can do the tricks with colors so that some parts are paler, some parts are cooler, darker. And it, whoops, except I didn't want the shiny, but you know what I'm talking about. That way you're getting a similar effect for much fewer resources. Once you have your shapes in place, let's get rid of the shiny ones. Once you have your shapes in place, then we can go in with the other tools like the splatter and just add detail. So instead of doing the whole thing, I'm just going to add some shadow pieces and then add some brighter green pieces just to get some individual leaf without having to do as much. So a full PC can go to town with as much detail as they want. Lower system resources can take advantage of some of these tools like the hull brush to fill in space and then just add a veneer of detail over the top. Let's get rid of these guys so we don't confuse the issue. So leafy trees, we like to have the rounder shapes. So for the palm, for the pine trees, now we are coarse bristles, gives you much more of the effect we're looking for. Pine trees also tend to be a deeper, darker green.
Depending on the type of pine tree you're going for, the direction and the size of the bristles. So if I'm going really detailed, I could get very small with a small brush and actually try to have branches that come out in the appropriate directions. Now we'll grab this one. You could again do every needle, every branch if you want, depending on the resources to your system. Okay. But really, we're just trying to give the impression of what this thing feels like, of what this thing looks like. Especially if I'm going to do more than one. The more detail you add, we're going to assume that one tree is the focus of that work. If we're doing a forest, then each individual tree doesn't need nearly as much detail. But that's a quick and simple pine tree. And again, I could use some of these other tools to fill in, so I'll grab my splatter tool in a nice, deeper, slightly bluer green. But I can keep it fairly small because I'm really just using it to fill in, not make branch details so much as hide the, the trunk, hide the other branches in there as we go. So when we see it, both up close and afar, it's filling in some of the details and the viewers filling some of the details of their own. So here we have two styles of tree, very quickly and easily done using the basic tools built into tilt brush and open brush. The more time you spend with it, we can add details like knot holes and bird nests and things like that. We could have bears in the tree or something swinging from vines. But the more time you take, these trees can really start taking a level of detail, a level of naturalism that really helps make your tilt brush sketches immersive, whether it's for level design or just artwork on its own. Trees, quick and easy, or trees with lots of detail, it's all about what's the feeling you're trying to get. We only need a few tools. You can go crazy with some of the more uh, detailed tools, but for a natural feeling, we're not trying to have sparkles or animation. We're really just focusing on the overall effect of a group of leaves, the light and shadow, and how it's supposed to be growing naturally out of the ground. Trees. What could be lovelier? So thanks to Joyce Kilmer for a lovely poem about trees. We're going to wrap this one up. Hopefully this has been helpful and inspiration to give you some ideas on what you can do to make a tree in tilt brush and really either go for a natural feeling or a real specific feeling that you're trying to get. Pine trees, deciduous trees, don't forget your cactus and your palm trees and that kind of stuff. It's all good. Banyan trees with a swoopy thing. You get the point. I'd love to see some of the trees that you guys create. So feel free to link in down below or upload them to Sketchfab or any place like that. Share your work. Look at other people's work to get inspiration. I hope this was helpful. I hope you had fun. Thanks for joining me. We do this here at Shameless Mayhem on YouTube. Let us know if you have questions or if there are things you'd like us to do lessons about. We have a lot of fun doing these. I hope you have fun watching them. Take care, everybody. Have fun with Tilt Brush.